Now, last of all, I'm going to walk through a study in, that was conducted jointly with Michael Hahn and Dan Jurafsky, which ties a lot of these ideas together. So what we're going to try to explain here are the Greenbergian word order correlations, or at least a subset of them. Now, what are these correlations? They were pointed out in first time in print by Greenberg in the 60s. And they are correlations that are something like this. So what we have here is numbers of languages in a good typological sample where they have, for example, object verb order, the verb following the object, and post positions where you say like friends too. This would be languages like Japanese. There's lots of languages like that. There's not a lot of languages that have object verb order, but prepositions. Conversely, when you have verb object order, you almost always have prepositions in your language, not postpositions. So there's this correlation of the order of the add position and the order of the object and the verb. And Greenberg pointed out a lot of correlations of this form. Now we're going to be applying this approach of thinking about human languages as a subset of possible communication codes shaped by, by functional constraints in particular looking at uh, the word orders of human language as a subset of the possible tree linearization algorithms. Remember, we're thinking of a word order grammar as a function that maps an unordered dependency tree to a distribution over strings linearizing the tree. And what we want to do now is actually characterize this function for natural language using a notion of efficiency and functional constraints. So we're going to actually implement this idea that you can find L for natural language as a, a function that maximizes informativity while minimizing complexity, using the ideas for how to quantify complexity that we talked about before. So the objective function J for a language for a word order grammar L is going to be parsability, which is how well you can recover the unordered tree from the string, minus complexity quantified as average surprisal given memory representations. So this is going to be uh, using surprisal theory to measure processing complexity. More precisely, parsability here is actually going to be the mutual information, which is the average pointwise mutual information, of trees and strings linearizing those trees. Um, and the complexity is going to be the entropy of strings. And these two factors are going to be weighted by a trade-off parameter lambda, which is always 0.9 in all the studies I'm presenting here. So how do you calculate these quantities? Modern NLP technology actually makes it possible to do both of these in reasonable ways. So parsability can be estimated using a neural parser, for example, the dozet manning parser. That's just a general algorithm that recovers graphs from strings. And average surprisal can be estimated using an LSTM language model, an autoregressive language model with potentially noisy memory. The remaining question then is how do you represent the word order grammars L so that you can actually perform this maximization? We're going to introduce this formalism for word order grammars that looks like this. A word order grammar consists of a mapping from these dependency relations, for example, nouns uh, with adjectives modifying them, to real numbers. So for example, that relation type is associated with the number 0.3. That means that in this ordering grammar, we're saying the adjective is going to go after the noun and its average distance from the noun is going to be 0.3. On the other hand, a negative number would be things going, a dependent going before the head. With a word order grammar like this, you can then take a actual dependency corpus of a language, reduce it to unordered dependency trees, and then use that ordering grammar to linearize those trees so you can say what would the strings in this language look like under that potential word order grammar. So the actual maximization problem that we're going to solve is going to look like this. You want to find um, a word order grammar and a parser and a language model to maximize this quantity. So L is the word order grammar, phi is the parameters of the parser, psi is the LSTM parameters. The whole thing is differentiable. So it's actually possible to solve this and find the optimal languages with the maximally efficient parsers and language models. Then our approach to explaining the Greenberg universals is going to look like this. Given the unordered dependency trees T from a dependency corpus, which is like your distribution over meanings you're trying to express in a language, you have your unordered tree topologies like this, we then find the best word order grammar by stochastic gradient descent on these three sets of parameters. We find optimal word order grammars. 
Then we ask, do these optimal word order grammars have the same statistical and qualitative properties as the actual word order grammars that you can observe in the corpus? So we ask, do you reproduce the Greenberg universals through this optimization process? And here's the results. I'm going to show here results for eight of these Greenberg universals. Each of these eight universals is a correlation between the order of two elements and the order of the verb and the object. So like the first one is whether there is a correlation between the order of the adposition and the noun phrase and the order of the verb and the object. So there being a correlation means that they, these dependencies go in the same direction. First, we can ask if these correlations actually hold in universal dependencies tree banks, and they do. So each of these eight dependencies holds quite strongly in universal dependencies tree banks. When verb object points one way, then each of these relations also points that same way. Now we can look at what we get in the optimized grammars. And indeed, it turns out that all eight of these Greenberg correlations are reproduced in the optimized grammars, the same as in the real grammars. We can also use this approach to visualize the predictability, which is the average surprisal, and the parsability, which is the informativity, of languages comparing real grammars, which you get by fitting those word order grammars to the observed orders in a corpus, against baseline grammars, which you get simply by using random numbers to generate those word order grammars. And here's what you get. In blue, you have here the density of random baseline grammars. They're pretty low in predictability, pretty low in parsability. And in red, we have the actual positions of the grammars fit to um, the dependency tree banks. And we see that for all the languages, they lie in the upper right quadrant here. They're all somewhat more optimized, either in terms of predictability or parsability compared to these random baselines. And we also draw here an approximate efficient frontier of the best achievable parsability and predictability. That's the gray lines. So we've explicitly modeled word order as a code for labeled tree structures. We took that sort of very abstract idea from the beginning of the talk and made it completely explicit. The objective function is to maximize information transfer while minimizing processing cost using this idea of surprisal with lossy representations of context. In doing so, we recover the Greenbergian word order correlations. In general, this is a highly generic information theoretic objective, which could be generalized to other structures. You could imagine, for example, trying to figure out what morphology you should add to words in order to optimize this kind of objective. So now let's wrap up. The goal is to explain properties of human language uh, in terms of the constraints that human language operates under. And in particular, we're thinking about the word orders of human language among the possible ways you can linearize trees. I showed that cross-linguistic word orders conceived of in this way show an influence of dependency locality, which is attributable to working memory constraints in comprehension and maybe also production. I developed an information theoretic model of those memory effects in language processing, uh, which generalizes dependency locality and yields information locality, which we saw some evidence for. And finally, uh, we use that processing model as part of an explicit optimization process to find optimal word orders. And we found that those word orders have some of the distinctive characteristics shared with natural language word order grammars. So, what my goal is in this kind of work, what I, I hope I've made some progress towards, is using information theory to create a nexus among these different fields, among typology, psycholinguistics, and machine learning. And in doing so, the hope is to develop a characterization of what natural language is in terms of the constraints it operates under, where each of these three fields has a lot to contribute to this project. So uh, this work has benefited from innumerable conversations with innumerable people. And so other than my co-authors, I'm just calling out a few people here who've been especially helpful and also my uh, grant support. Here is a whole bunch of papers and resources you can read about many of the things that I presented today. So thank you for your attention and have a great rest of your day.